Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. It's been a very, very, very long time since I've reviewed any Busby Blasters on this channel. Like seriously, it's been forever since I reviewed anything that says Busby on it, and I don't know why it's been so long since I've reviewed any Busby Blasters. Mainly because Busby's just kind of been that company that exists in the background but nobody ever remembers because they only release like two or three things every year. But regardless, I do have a Busby Blaster to take a look at today, that being the Monorail. Oh my god, isn't it gorgeous? Let's get into it. <music> So the Monorail is a 2017 release out of Busby in the, you know, I don't think Busby has ever done any like actual series names like Dart Zone and Nerf have. So I guess it's just the Monorail. This is a blaster that uh, was actually pretty freaking exciting when it was first being revealed and it immediately disappeared after it came out. Like almost instantly, this thing was obscure and nobody remembers what it is. I'm terrified to find out why but you guys are gonna figure out why by the end of this video. So with all that said, let's start with the design. It is pretty simple like most Busby blasters out there, but I do think that it works pretty well for this design, even if, in my personal opinion, it looks a little bit too much like a giant flintlock or like a real steel shotgun. Like, seriously, does this not look like a big, like, hand cannon pistol thing that just goes like super aggressively when you shoot it? Like, holy crap, does this thing look ridiculous? It's really bland, like there's just not very much detail, especially on the entire front end. Most of the detail is right back here. You can see there's this kind of carbon fiber looking pattern that's on this gray part of the shell up here in the green, and there's these stripes down here, it, the carbon fibers on this orange part on the grip. Like all back here, this part looks really cool, and then once you get up here, it just becomes super boring, and the only thing of interest is the transparent top prime, prime top part right here, and the freaking priming handle. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip and a pump handle. No stock, no foregrip other than the pump handle, whatever. The main grip, this is one of the rare cases where an older gen Busby blaster has a really, really, really good main grip. This thing is very comfortable. It is just the right size to get my whole hand around it comfortably. It's not too big, it's not too small, and I can easily get my fingers on it without any fingers slipping off. If you have gigantic monster hands, I can't imagine maybe your pinky finger has to go down here, but I don't think even then would it be comfortable because of how nice and rounded the grip is. As for the foregrip up here, it is a little bit small, but if you ignore the finger troils, it is honestly a pretty big pump handle. Honestly, this is a very comfortable blaster all in all, especially out of Busby. So how does this blaster work? Well, this is the interesting part. It is a rear-loading tube magazine style shotgun blaster. It only shoots one dart at a time though. But essentially, you take this, you pull it back and flip it open, and you have the rear tube, to which you can rear load in six darts. So you take six darts and you just push them like this, and you just keep going until you get all six. And once you have six darts, you close this and then you push it back shut and it pushes the darts all the way forward. From then, you can take this and pull it back, you push it forward and you can fire once. And the blaster doesn't have slam fire. And you can do that five more times. There we go. Yeah. We'll get to what just happened in a moment. But first, let's talk about the trigger and the smoothness of operation. First of all, the pump. It's actually pretty smooth. Pulling it back and pushing it forwards is a very smooth experience, and it's got a satisfying click when it hits the front position. The trigger pull is also pretty good. It does have quite a lot of pull, but it does have a pretty satisfying pop when you actually pull it in, and the trigger spring is really satisfying. What I don't really like is this. I feel like the clip holding this thing shut is just a bit too strong, and it can be pretty difficult to pull open and push shut. It's pretty smooth to just flip it open, but trying to open and close it directly is an actual pain. And it does have a jam door here, which you are going to get very familiar with. I think it's time that we see this blaster fire, because it jams. And it jams a lot. Do you think what happened earlier was just a one-time thing? <laughs> oh, hell no. Oh, there's a lot of malfunctions that happen when you try and use this blaster. And you guys are going to enjoy watching it happen. I can't win. 
I literally cannot win for some reason. It just won't fire. Oh, great. It's doing the thing that the last one did. This dart is actually folded. And this one just won't go down. Gosh. What a nightmare. Get out. Let's try that again, shall we? If I can just complete that target, then that'll be fine for this firing demo. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's try again. There you go. You've gotta be kidding me. Is it jammed or is it just not continuing forward? It's just not advancing. Why won't it advance? I have to ramrod the darts, ow! To make them advance, now it's jammed. It's folding the dart in half again. Oh no, the dart's completely folding in half. It's, it's freaking folded. Why? Finally. Now I think we're empty. I don't know why the Vision Pro is fogging up. You guys are gonna suffer with me until I get six shots on that damn target. God, we were almost there, but no, it won't catch. No. No. It's folding the dart in half. Did it just fold another one? It just it won't it won't load. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fire. There we go. Can we get through these six? Get through these six. There's still darts stuck in the back that just won't fit. It just... I, I give up! I can't do this anymore! I can't... I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. There, we win. I can't go over mod potential yet. Because I need to explain what in the hell just happened. A lot of people are going to assume that it was because I was using Zuru Insanity darts. Nope. Literally every single type of freaking dart I have. None of them fed consistently. Every single one jammed. Waffle heads jammed, Busby darts jammed, Zuru darts jammed, Nerf darts jammed. Every single freaking type of dart. Inset dart tips, wide dart tips, all of them. None of them worked. They all worked catastrophically bad. And because of the way that this mech is set up, Good luck fixing it. This blaster right here may just take the record for the most amount of broken and bent and screwed up darts over the double dealer. Yeah, the double dealer likes to break darts a lot if you use it improperly and you keep trying to prime it after it jams. I get it, that blaster sucks. This one is worse. This one only has six darts and 99.9999999% of the time, I couldn't get through those six darts without at least two darts jamming up or getting stuck in the feeding mechanism and just not advancing forwards because they didn't feel like it. Or the worst kind of jams, as you saw in the firing demo, would be where the dart would enter the elevator partially, be pulled down, and then be bent in half, upside down, in here, behind all this crap. So you had to figure out how to move the crap out of the way to access the dart so that you could flip it back over and get it up. Yeah. This blaster does not have any mod potential. The only thing you can really do with it is 
try in vain to fix this mechanism, but because the mechanism is so weird, there's really no way to fix it without completely replacing it. And there's not a single mod kit for this thing anywhere on the internet that I could find, so why would you even bother trying to do it by hand from scratch? Do I recommend the monorail? No, I don't recommend the monorail. Do not get that stupid thing. Whatever you do, that thing's just a waste of time and a waste of money. Also, get this. Because of the way that this clear part of the plastic is put on on the top, it is clipped and solvent welded down from the top. So opening this blaster, completely impossible. You have to saw this thing off in order to open it. Why can't there be a good tube magazine loading shotgun? That was the chance. That was the one chance that we could have had to have a good rear loading tube mag style shotgun in the Nerf hobby without having to spend a million bajillion dollars on a 3D printed one. Nope, it works like crap. I don't know. Please do not get one. I'm done with this freaking video.